but this one has the uh, binder here. It comes in really handy and helps the pages to last a little longer. So you might keep that in mind when you're getting your book. Uh, of course, you can download uh, the entire book yourself online, print it out, do whatever you want to do. There, um, uh, whether you have it on your computer or decide to print it out, whichever it might be, uh, all the way up, you can print every unit that we've been through so far up to where we are now with respect, okay? Um, so we'll be starting out uh, in chapter, uh, chapter 5 again, and this is uh, responding to disrespect. You know, responding to when someone bullies you and is disrespectful, uh, has a section particularly on bullying. This has been one of the most, uh, I think Katan mentioned it the last class too, it's been one of the most popular uh, parts of the Peace of Solution that we've taught. Um, it's been the most requested, actually, that's for sure. But let's go ahead and turn over to page, uh, lesson plan 5, page E. Lesson plan 5, page E, if you have your, your teacher's manual. And what you'll see there in lesson plan 5, page E, is um, uh, procedure number 7 is the procedure that we're actually in. And we went partially through procedure number 7 the last couple classes. And so where we're at today is page 130. Catan finished up with page 129. So just looking at uh, page E there, it says uh, in the bold, it says when familiarity breeds contempt, let's take a look, uh, a closer look at families, and let's take a closer look at friends, found on pages 128 through 131, and that's what we're doing now. And then what we'll do after that is we'll complete the exercise in the section uh, understanding the main point found on page 132. And this is just a question and answer thing which we'll, we'll try to go through. But, uh, but for now, like I said, page 130. So we could go ahead and turn there now. If you have your books, go ahead and turn to page 130. This really is, this is what you've got to remember when responding to disrespect is that <clears throat> everything you've learned in the peaceful solution up till now <laughs> is going to come into play because it all works uh, you know one of my most like words here is synergistically it all works together everything you've learned about acceptance about self-control about um, character in itself you know all of these things work together with to form the respect that, uh, that you must have, you know, the value system, everything works together. And to be able to do this, because otherwise if you had no self-control and if you had not learned anything about character at all, how would you even know how to respond to disrespect? You, you do it just like we have all our life, by fighting back, by retaliating, by belittling and calling names and screaming and yelling and so forth. Well, that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to have a peaceful life. And the way to have a peaceful life is to practice this. What's the name of the program? Peaceful Solution Character Education Program, right? And it really is a way to peace. In fact, at the bottom of all, every unit uh, there, uh, you'll notice it says to change the hearts and minds. To change the hearts and minds. Because you don't just go out one day and say, you know, that sounded pretty great what that guy was talking about. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and start showing respect to everybody <laughs> you know it, it doesn't occur overnight like that buddy <laughs> you've got to work on it you've got to you got to have a foundation you have gotta know what you're doing and so that's why as teachers of the peaceful solution that that's why we we know that the the reiteration the iteration and reiteration over and over again and when we're going through a certain chapter and we revert back to previous chapters and previous lessons it's to build it within the mind of the student so that they will be able to think in that very same manner when something comes up they've got a situation boom you know they think back to wait a minute I remember you know the process itself might not be that they stop and say well I'm thinking back to the peaceful solution now on page 25 you know it doesn't go like that it's just that 
what needs to come at that time will come to mind. It'll pop into your head. You'll remember what it says about being prepared to be disrespected. You'll remember what it says about controlling yourself. You'll remember what is said about uh, valuing people. you remember what is said about thinking about others, using empathy and, and thinking about where they're from and what they've been going through all their life, you know. These things will come to mind and because why? Because your heart has changed. It's in your heart and your mind. And that's the way it works. So this is why the peaceful solution, uh, one of the things when you first start out with the peaceful solution, it says if this morality is taught diligently, not only to children, but to adults too, if it's taught diligently, that's the key factor. You must teach it diligently over and over again. Not a one-time thing. Okay, I think I've spent enough time on that. Um, looking back just for a minute on page 128 and 129, Catan just finished up with that. Uh, just a little reminder here. At the top of the page on 128, it says, Everybody deserves respect. Those you know well and those who are strangers, both. Go the extra mile to keep interactions with all people respectful and pleasant. And I think uh, Katana alluded to the fact that a lot of times, you know, we're at the store, we run into somebody we don't really know, and every, there's all, uh, all kinds of fluffy kindness and everything. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's okay, no problem, you know, and, and all this. But yet, when you do it with someone you know, when it should be where, where you're closer and, and care more for each other and, and really want to make things work and you bump into someone you know, like a family member or something, and, and the fight's on. Why'd you, why'd you do that, stupid? Or, you know, and, and that occurs quite often. It's when that famili familiarity, boy, it's hard for me to say, when familiarity breeds contempt. And that's what he went over there. Uh, last class. And so then, of course, taking a closer look at families, and um, it has a few suggestions on how family members can be a little more respectful to each other and not fall into this trap of the contempt because of familiarity, okay? So we're going to move on a little bit and talk some about friends. In fact, uh, page 130 is where we're at. Page 130. Let's take a closer look at friends. Now, friends, like family, play an important role in our lives. Friends help to make our lives richer and give us a sense of belonging and acceptance. However, friends can also be disrespectful and influence each other to make uh, negative choices. Now, look at that uh, picture right there. So... Let's take a closer look at friends, and of course it shows everybody all glad to see each other and so forth, you know. All right. Got a few notes on there. Um, so friends help to make our lives richer, give us a sense of belonging and acceptance. You know, we, we feel close to them. We feel like we have something in common. You know, knowing somebody, being close to someone. But friends can be disrespectful and influence each other to make negative choices. Now remember that word, influence. <clears throat> friends have the ability to exert both positive and negative influences on each other. Positive influences encourage moral, respectful behavior towards oneself and others. Now when we're talking about encouraging there's another word that is discouraging. Encouraging and discouraging. And if you look at it as a very simple definition, I guess, would be encourage is to help increase the courage. You know, somebody's, you know, wanting to do something positive and you would want to encourage them, help them be courageous to do that very thing. On the other hand, if they're wanting to do something negative, you might want to discourage, help take that, that courage that they have to do that negative thing, help take that away while encouraging the positive thing. Now, what we don't want to do is we don't want to discourage people from doing positive actions, from, from being morally responsible. We don't want to discourage them from that. We want to encourage it in every way we can. 
So as we go through this, you're, we're going to be talking a little bit about peer pressure, a little bit about bullying, and, and so forth. All these things come into play. But uh, just remember that encouraging is to help a person have courage to do something, and discouraging is to take that courage away. So, once again, friends have the ability to exert both positive and negative influences. And, of course, we've talked about influences over and over again and how prevalent they are. Friends have a unique ability to, to actually um, put forth the very, uh, their influences are very strong. Friends' influence is very strong. If your friends that are around you, the people you're hanging with, if they're doing something negative, you are likely to be involved in that negative thing too because you've been influenced so strongly. So you want to get away from negatives as quickly as you can. You want to have courage. You want to be encouraged to get away from the, ne the negativity. On the other hand, if you have friends that are doing positive acts, who are, are um, behaving themselves in, in a very morally acceptable manner, not wanting to hurt anybody, including themselves or anybody else, or property or the environment, then by all means, you are um, amongst some great... Uh, influences and continue on. So they have the ability to exert both, both positive and negative influences on each other and positive influences encourage the moral respectful behavior towards oneself and others and negative influences on the other hand promote risk-taking behavior such as engaging in premarital sex, uh, abusing alcohol and drugs, and to this list you can also add smoking, disrespecting authority, being dishonest. When peers influence each other negatively, it is called negative peer pressure. Negative peer pressure. So stop right there for just a minute and think about this. Um, have you ever, have you ever seen in action negative peer pressure? Think about it. Have you ever been the perpetrator, <laughs> the instigator, the influencer of negative peer pressure? Eh, you know, I have. I think back. I, I surely have. I'm sure most of us have at some point in time. See, that's the thing about the peaceful solution. It, it cuts through all the, the outer layers and all the the hoopla, and gets down to the nitty-gritty here so that we can really look at ourselves and see what we've been involved in in the past and how we want to change it in the future. So it's called negative peer pressure. We've all, I'll answer it for you guys, uh, we, we've all been involved, so I know we have. But here's the bottom line. <clears throat> if friends try to pressure you into doing something that is wrong and could risk your health, well-being, and self-respect, then they are showing disrespect to you. For example, if your friend says to you, I've got some marijuana, I know where we can go smoke it, then your friend has not considered your health and well-being and is not showing concern for you. Someone who is a true friend would never try to encourage you to do something that is illegal and could damage your health. So we have here an example of something that's definitely, definitely wrong. It's wrong to do this. It's something that could hurt you, it could hurt others, it could hurt uh, the environment and property and so forth. Um, so we know it's wrong, and this friend is trying to pressure you into doing something that is wrong, so you would want to stand up against that. That is disrespectful. They're disrespecting you and themselves and anybody else around. <coughs> Another way in which friends can show disrespect to you is by not accepting your decision. Now this gives the example of when friends try to talk you into making a negative choice. And what's a negative choice? One that could harm you, others, property, or the environment, right? They're, they're trying to talk you into um, making this negative choice and they tease or make fun of you even after you firmly said no they are not showing to res respect to you by accepting your ability to make choices. True friends will accept your decision even when it's different from theirs. Now, of course, this is giving the example of a negative choice. Sometimes you make choices where there might not be a negative. 
For instance, uh, you know, we've given this example before where you like the color green, I like the color blue. We're talking about painting a room. There's no negative uh, option to either one of those colors. Either one of them will work in the situation we're looking at, and, and neither one of us agree with the other one. Now, there's nothing wrong in presenting your case, but if it, just because I don't agree with your choice, if you start trying to bully me and force me, when I say force, I'm talking about any bullying or just not respecting my choice, um, and, and we'd have to have some, uh, somebody come along, probably a third party, um, and, and uh, solve it for us. If we couldn't solve it ourselves, one of us come to an agreement by presenting our case in a respectful manner to the other person, then, then that would be fine. So, so this affects everything. Another way in which friends can show disrespect to you is by not accepting your decision. Now, on the other hand, if your decision is immoral, and it has the ability, your choice, your decision, it has the ability to hurt others, and the person is trying to convince you not to do that, then by all means they need to continue trying and to continue encouraging you not to make that bad choice. So, uh, e even to presenting examples and, and saying, man, you're, you're making a wrong choice, being outright what some might even call rude. If you're trying to stop somebody from hurting themselves or hurting someone else, uh, you know, the, the rudeness thing can be thrown out the window because they need someone to, to step up the game a little bit. They need someone to raise their voice. They need someone to let them know what a drastic move they're fixing to take. You know, there are different levels that we need to be able to deal with. Just like you wouldn't run through a crowd and, and uh, uh, run through, there's a line there and you run through and you bump some people along the way and, you know, they're looking at you like you're crazy. Why'd you do that, you know? Well, when they see you stop that person from falling off a cliff, you save their life. When they see that, all that stuff goes out the window. There was a reason for your... Uh, acting a, a little uh, less careful, I guess you could say, or a reason for taking a little bit of a risk, just similar to an emergency vehicle. I know we, we have fire vehicles around here sometimes. I'm sure many of you have seen this taking place to where all of a sudden there's a truck speeding down the road. And you're like, what in the world is that guy doing? He's breaking the speed limit. Well, he can break the speed limit because property and lives are in danger. See? So there's a different level there that you have to take into consideration. You don't block the road so he can't get through and go up there and hammer him at the window and, and describe to him how he's breaking the speed limit. You know, let's get the fire put out first and then talk about it, okay? So you see, there's everything is so much deeper. It's not just cut and dry. You know, you can make that statement. Another way in which friends can show disrespect to you is by not accepting your decision. All right, well, somebody could take that and say, man, that guy, I was sitting back and I had me a blunt lid up and I was having a great time, man. This dude come up telling me I ain't supposed to do this. He's disrespecting me by not accepting my decision. Oh, come on, man. No. You see, it's not cut and dry. We have to know what we're talking about. And that's where the rest of the piece of solution comes into play. Everything we've learned about moral character, everything we've learned about acceptance, about self-control, everything about values, it all comes into play. That's what we need to keep in mind. Because I know, I mean, I've heard some of these excuses put forth, you know, saying, well, he disrespected me. <laughs> no, it wasn't disrespect. <laughs> he was trying to save your life. <laughs> so, But anyway, when friends try to talk you into making a negative choice or tease or make fun of you, even after you firmly said no, they're not showing respect to you or accepting your ability to make choices. True friends will accept your decision even when it's different from theirs. And that's uh, they'll accept your decision, of course, if it's not hurting others, Right? not hurting yourself, all the things we've learned. Disrespect can also occur when friends monopolize each other's time. And let me say something about that. Even after you've warned somebody and they're making a bad choice and you've warned them and pointed it out to them that they are, 
you know what? They're going to go their, their way. You do have to accept that, hey, they're going to make a choice. You don't have to agree with their choice, but you do need to accept that, hey, they're, they're, uh, you know, they're, they have free will. They can choose what they're going to do, even though this is the wrong way. I don't agree with it, and I don't accept it. They shouldn't be doing this. So disrespect can also occur when friends monopolize each other's time. Remember, friends are unique individuals with their own likes and dislikes, and just because someone is a friend does not mean that he cannot have other friends and spend time with them as well. When we assume that our friends are exclusive to us and try to deny them the opportunity to have other friends, we are being disrespectful. Has that ever occurred to you? Have you ever, you know, you ever thought, I'm I'm talking about, has it ever occurred to you where, where you've got a close friend, right? And the close friend, you're like, you can't get hold of him. You finally get hold of him. He's off doing something with someone else. And you're like, man, I didn't know you were doing that. Why didn't you tell me? I would have come along. <laughs> well, you know, like this says, you know, your friend can have other friends. It might have been something that he wanted to do with just that other friend. Not that he had any dislike or disrespect towards you. It was just that he had something planned with this other person and that's the way they wanted it to go. And and so we have to be aware of that. We can't monopolize each other's time. We can't we can't think, well that's that's my friend and if if he doesn't let me go with him when they go, well I'm not even talking to him no more, you know. People get really picky about stuff like this, you know. They 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 let their they let their emotions get out of control. And we're going to talk about that in <clears throat> just a minute. But um, so going over this page again, just briefly, we're talking about friends and how friends have the ability to exert positive or negative influences on each other in order to get you to do something. Um, and uh, uh, so a, a little positive encouragement is while it's hot like this, stay hydrated, okay? Um, so. When friends try to pressure you to do something wrong, you know, then they're showing disrespect to you because this is a respect unit. We want to know what respect and disrespect is. And then not not monopolizing another's time. Let's go on over to page 131. Page 131 at the top of the page is chapter 5 in the respect unit. Straight talk. Let's face it, nobody wants to feel left out. It kind of goes back to the last thing we talked about, right? Your friend and trying to monopolize your time. No one wants to feel left out. Having friends is great, but the need to have friends should never be greater than your desire to maintain a positive moral character. It is up to you to constantly evaluate your friendships because the development of your character is directly affected by the influence of the friends you choose. Okay, that was a mouthful. Having friends is great. The need to have friends shouldn't outweigh your desire to have a positive moral character, okay? That would make it too easy for you to be swayed into doing something wrong if your desire to have friends was more than your desire to have a positive moral character. So it's up to you to constantly evaluate your friendships. So you look at your friendships, You know, you can be friends with somebody and they can be doing everything right at one time, being respectful, um, making the right decisions that doesn't hurt themselves or you, anybody else, and and very respectful for people's property and everything. And something can go, you know, it can just flip around. A switch can be flicked and the person can go off the other way. Something mental or something, some type of, uh, some type of uh, physical ailment. I've seen, uh, um, this is getting off track for just a moment, but, but uh, physical ailments, one of the things that seem to work faster than anything else on people's uh, attitude when it comes to physical would be like a urinary tract infection. Um, that can send a person into oblivion, hallucinations, and everything in just a very short period of time. I'm talking about within hours, they can go from being a calm, respectful individual to being a wild, raving lunatic. And, you know, uh, that, that's just an example of how physical ailments can have a, 
a huge bearing upon how people conduct themselves. So, uh, anyways, uh, getting back on this, uh, uh, friends can turn around uh, really, really quick. Um, if you're not careful and you're not evaluating your friendships, kind of keeping an eye on it, you might not see little hints of things taking place. Little hints of some disrespect here, some disrespect there, a little bit of name calling here, a little bit of name calling there. Um, uh, just little hints that if you're watching things, you, you, can, you can be aware. But the development of your character is directly affected by the influence of the friends you choose. So once again, it goes back to that negative or positive peer pressure, that influence from your friends. Not wanting to be left out, you know, wanting to be part of the crowd. So you really got to keep an eye on that thing. Now putting it all together, so talking about all these things, when the familiarity breeds contempt, the families, the, the maintaining control, and, and um, taking a closer look at friends, putting all these things together, when those who are closest to us are disrespectful, it can cause us to feel frustrated, rejected, and embarrassed. Now, um, I'm not asking you to raise your hands, but those of you in here and online too, I mean, think about it. Have you had anybody in the recent past that, that was very close to you or is very close to you that was disrespectful to you? Maybe somebody that you held in a very high position of honor. Like, uh, I know a lot of people hold uh, clergy members, you know, in a high position of honor. They hold school principals and teachers and counselors in this very high position. And if any trust is, um, is thrown out the window, if there's any disrespect that comes from those individuals to a person, it can be very devastating. So when those who are closest to us are disrespectful, it can cause us to feel frustrated, rejected, and embarrassed. Now, what do you know about those three things I just mentioned? The frustrated, rejected, and embarrassed. Well, what we should know right there is that's some of the primary emotions that you might experience when something is done that you don't agree with. You know, you were disrespected. Somebody said something or did something. You don't like it. You were embarrassed about what they said, or, or you were frustrated. Rejected would fit there very well with someone who's close to you and, and was disrespectful. So then what comes next after those primary things, right? Well, uh, let's, uh, let's see. Let me find this. Turn to page, uh, well, if you have your self-control unit, which most of you probably don't, but if you did, you could go to page 30 in your self-control unit. Those of you that are uh, out there online, you know, you can download the self-control unit too, and you can see on page 30, it's, in, it's titled, What Are Emotions? I'm going to put it right there so you can see the picture right there real quick on the overhead. See, water emotions, and it has the different faces there from anger and sadness and joy. <clears throat> so this is where these emotions come into play, and, and you have to have some self-control built in to be able to, con to control yourself. What are emotions? All right, on page 30 in the self-control unit, emotions are strong physical and mental responses triggered by what we experience, okay? Now... What we just read on page 131 in the respect unit, talking about the frustrated, the rejected, the embarrassed, those could be triggers. See? These are primary, primary type emotions that might trigger something else. But emotions, uh, they're, the, res the response is triggered by what we experience. A trigger is something that starts a process. Something, it starts something in place. Um, like pulling a trigger on a gun. It starts the, the hammer uh, closing onto the bullet, which fires a bullet, which moves the bullet towards a target, and so forth. 
But emotions are triggered by what we hear, see, smell, taste, touch, and think. Triggers can affect what we feel almost instantaneously. Like, boom, and it is done. Our brain processes millions of pieces of information per second, and emotions can occur without conscious thought and within a split second of the event that triggered them. And here's an example of, uh, of fear, you know. For example, you see a truck speeding at you, you think it's going to hit you, and you feel afraid. Now, this is taking place split-second thought, you know. You don't have ten minutes to think about it. So you see it, you feel afraid, you don't have to stop and consider whether you are afraid, you know it right away. You automatically experience the emotion of fear because your senses have made you aware that your life is in danger. Now other feelings though might not be as automatic or as easily as I, uh, identified as fear. <clears throat> Just like when this disrespect is shown and um, uh, you know, the frustration or the things that come about, the embarrassment and so forth. Uh, you know, they, they come along, but, but they're not quite as easily identified. Embarrassed, possibly. The frustrated or rejected, you'd probably have to think about a little bit to kind of see where you were going, you know. What was I thinking? What was I feeling uh, when this took place? The embarrassed, usually there's some, you know, red face and, and uh, so forth going on, increased blood, uh, heart rate and stuff like that. But, but so other feelings might not be as automatic or as easily identified as fear. These feelings might be triggered by memories and may require conscious thought. For instance, you come home from school, you smell the cookies baking, and the smell of baked cookies triggers your thoughts and you begin to think about your grandma who taught you how to bake cookies because you have such fond memories of your grandma you feel glad <laughs> you know i think everybody's been there you know we've had we've had uh, uh triggers that tr triggered fond memories of whatever the case might have been uh from the past you know i'm sure we've had some that we'd rather not remember too but nevertheless these things take place so going back to it again on page 130 Putting it all together, when those who are closest to us are disrespectful, it can cause us to feel frustrated, rejected, and embarrassed. Get that? Those, those things right there. Those emotions. Relationships with family and friends are an important part of life. And when disrespect is shown, it is your cue to stop and think about your primary emotions, like we're just talking about, and then consider the best way to handle the situation. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we like to make use of this sign right here. I think... Uh, I think everybody can see it right there. It looks like we're kind of zoomed in a little or something. I can't quite get it in there. There it is. Okay. So, stop, think, and consider your options and proceed with the right choice. See that? That's the stop sign. That's the stop acronym right there. And that's what we're talking about right there is we need to stop and think about these things and don't just, don't just let our emotions rage out of control. Stop and think about it. The best way to handle the situation. Now, although disrespect can and does occur in close relationships, you should never deal with it by becoming angry. Also, ignoring acts of disrespect might encourage further acts to occur. So when people do not deal with disrespect effectively, it can lead to resentment and bearing a grudge, and this will only compound the problem. Now, we talked previously, in some previous lessons, we talked about how you would... Um, how you would deal with this. Well, this one in itself, responding to disrespect. But we talked about some of the things that you would need to do to, uh, to deal with this situation. Because like it says, if you ignore it, it might continue. Yet at the same time, if you don't, uh, uh, if you don't deal with it effectively and with respect, then it can lead to other things. You can, only, you can compound the problem. So instead, stop, think, and decide on the best option and practice self-control. We just saw the stop sign, right? And demonstrate the skills of positive communication. Now, if you turn back to page 55 here in your respect unit, turn back to page 55.
This is in chapter 3 of the Respect Unit and is entitled, Communicate Respectfully. So, if someone disrespects you and then you come back at them with more disrespect, is that going to solve anything? The answer is no. It will only make the problem worse. If you ignore it, not saying there might be some time that you might have to ignore it for a little bit, might be that the person is not ready to talk, might be that they're in a fit of rage, you know, it, it just might not be the right time to discuss it with them, okay? And you might even need to get some help to, to handle the situation from a trusted teacher, um, counselor, and so forth. But on page 55, it talks about communicating respectfully. And so this is one of the things that we need to do also uh, to learn how to use it synergistically with everything else that we've learned. And this is one of those physical things where you're actually not only thinking about what to do, but you're opening your mouth and speaking it too. So you're, you're thinking about it. You're having an action that goes with it, and part of that action is opening your mouth, most likely, to deal with it. Of course, communicating covers a lot of different areas, and in most, in most cases it would include some words to the person. But communication is another aspect of showing respect to others. We communicate in many different ways, and the most common form is by speaking. But there's also these other factors. Remember. When we've been disrespected, you're not only you're not only you know keeping your mouth shut and trying to think of what to say that would be proper, but you're also needing to control your facial uh, your facial expressions, your, your body language, right? And then even if you do get the right words, you better watch that tone of voice too, because the tone of voice can can change everything that you say. You could be saying something very respectful, and if your tone of voice doesn't go along with it. Uh -uh, not working, okay? And if you're standing there with your fists clenched and, you know, your body language and you're frowning while you say it, you know, that's not going to go anywhere either. You really do have to wrap it all up together and communicate respectfully. Um, some of the examples given are, uh, for example, crossing your hands, slumping in your chair, tells others you don't want to hear what they have to say. That's one example of body language. Um, rolling your eyes when you're instructed to do something shows that you're bored and not, not even interested in what you're being told. But communication also involves listening. Now this is where we might put this to use when we're being disrespected. We might try listening to what's really being said. Did the person, you know, and, and, we, and we need to remember also too the different forms of disrespect that we've learned. Remember? Remember the different forms of disrespect? There is intentional, right? There's unintentional disrespect. Maybe they did it accidentally. If we're listening and willing to communicate, we'll probably find that out very quickly. Intentional, that's another deal. But then there's also the uh, imagined disrespect. Remember that one? Maybe they didn't disrespect you at all. Maybe it's just your imagination. Maybe you thought they said something that was disrespectful. Maybe you jumped to a conclusion and thought they were being disrespectful, right? Think about those things. So see, all this has to occur within, you know, we're talking about just moments after something occurs. You bumped into me, you said something I thought was disrespectful. Man, I got to go through all this and have it in me. That's, that's why you do have to have it in you. That's why you do have to have it in your heart. That's why you do have, it, have to have it in your mind. That's why you do need to be practicing it. Because the practice of something is what's going to show up in the heat of the moment. Why do we practice? It's so that you, you have muscle memory. Whether it's brain muscle memory or muscle memory from you know, your arm muscles or what have you, that muscle memory is, is actually going to help make the difference. You're practicing it, practicing it, practicing it. So that when it takes place, you, know, you might practice it and fail a bunch of times, but then one day, one day it's going to come along, someone's going to disrespect, disrespect you in some way or manner, or you think they did, and you're going to handle it just beautifully, bam, just like that, one whack, and you did it just perfect, you know. That's when you can look and say, wow, this has been worth it all this time. <laughs> so and it's, it's very satisfying too. That's the thing about it. I, I know, I know. There's a lot of uh, 
book learning that has to be done. Um, there, there's a lot of reminders about um, how we need to conduct ourselves from day to day and so forth. But, but the reward comes in more ways than one. But one of the rewards that comes is when you do see that you did do it right. And it, it's not a thing of pride. It's a thing of, of being you know, well pleased, I would say, well pleased in that you were able to get to that point, you know, achieve that level, if you will. And don't, but don't get too, uh, don't get too carried away because it's probably going to come right back at you just to see, just to see again how well you had it down, you know, and you'll have another opportunity to see if you got it or not. I hope that made sense. But, um, so talking about listening and communication, uh, it, it talks about uh, when you're a great listener, you give others an opportunity to expe express their wants and needs and feelings without being interrupted. And that might be the only thing that's even needed in this case of someone disrespecting you. They, they might have felt like you just don't listen to them and don't even want to hear what they got to say. And if you can show that you are willing to listen, that might solve the whole deal. You might be able to take care of it right there on the spot, you know, instead of getting all huffed up about it. Listening politely to someone and waiting to speak your turn shows care and concern. That's, a, that's really a huge deal. And then if you turn on over to page 56, and yeah, I'm spending a minute on this for sure, um, because this communication is, is everything. When someone has disrespected you or you think they have, and you're controlling your emotions, this communication is so very important. Um, on page 56, it talks about the language of, of respect. <clears throat> and in the second paragraph, uh, respectful communication involves controlling your emotions so that you can refrain from the name calling or teasing others. And um, the two most common reasons for someone uh, put down and to make them feel bad, um, th those are the two most, uh, uh, well, the two most common reasons are to put someone down and to make them feel bad about themselves. Another reason, you might just be joking around, but you might be the only one that thinks your joke is funny, you know? And the name calling and joking. I was just joking. Don't get upset. Well, you know. All right. So, so controlling yourself, this is so important. In fact, um, I had the opportunity to look at a... Um, uh, I was looking around for some examples of, of where where you could see others, um, like other agencies and so forth that, that use, um, basically it, it sounds a little bit like the peaceful solution that they've taken some of that information and applied it. And I ran across this thing, it's from a driver control, or not a driver control, this is control your emotions. It's from a driver training um, a driver training course. I'm going to read it to you. It's too, the print is too small to put it on the overhead. So listen to this. This is talking about how to control your emotions in case of like, a, like an accident or a perceived... It's, it's actually talking about disrespect. It's actually dealing with a situation where someone cut you off in traffic or uh, made some obscene gesture at you with their hand or uh, honk, honked their horn a bunch of times at you and you didn't even do anything, you know. Some of the things that tend to get people a little fired up in traffic that readily turn into road rage and, and you know, people get hurt and lose their lives and so forth. I'm going to read this to you. I, I had to copy this because we were dealing with this tonight. But strong emotions, get that, can impair you just the same as alcohol or a controlled substance. Because it had been talking about um, alcohol and, and D DWIs and stuff like that but that there were other things that could impair your driving also, and then it got into emotions. And I thought, wow, this is really great that they see this and are actually even teaching this, you know. Um, any condition that interferes with your judgment or reasoning abilities, now, get that? With your judgment and reasoning abilities, that's what we want to be able to do with the piece of solution, is make proper judgments for the situation, and have great reasoning abilities to discern what's going on. So any condition that interferes with your judgment or reasoning abilities makes you an unsafe driver. Emotional distress of any kind, anger, sadness, depression, anxiety, 
Now, now get this. It makes you an unsafe driver, but it also makes you an unsafe individual around others. You know, these are things that if we're carrying it around with us, can cause us to flip off on somebody, to 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 to, uh, to you know experience rage and and um, or, or even wanting to fight somebody or call them names or what have you. Any of these emotions can affect your concentration and your ability to make clear choices. Just like when you take alcohol or another drug, it's up to you to take responsibility for your own behavior. Man, this is beautiful. This is like right out of the book. And your own judgment. You have to recognize when you are not in the proper condition to be behind the wheel. Or in the proper condition to be talking to somebody about something. Or in the proper condition to be dealing with disrespect. Or, you know, I could go on and on. Anger is a very dangerous emotional state, and it talks about the driving community and road rage and, and um, letting others' bad habits trigger you to the point of rage. And um, now here's an example. might be that you just had a fight with someone you love, you know, some kind of disrespect taking place, an argument or something, and, uh, or something that occurred at work to make you upset. Of course, you, you choose to be upset. You, know, you haven't learned to control yourself yet. Uh, but you need to let go of those feelings before you start driving. If you can't, you're driving impaired. So see, they even understand the importance of this when it comes to driving, for sure. Anyway, it talks about uh, taking a walk or doing breathing exercises. Now, we've talked about reducing stress and controlling our anger, right? We talked about taking deep breaths. We talked about drinking more water. We talked about laughing several times a day to reduce the stress and so forth. <coughs> uh, counting to ten. You know, whatever it is we have to do to not, get the, not let the situation get out of control. Um, always be aware of your state of mind. Anyway, I thought that was very interesting that, that they had that in that lesson that they give to uh, drivers... Um, driver's ed classes. It's for driver's ed and driver control. Uh, if someone's got a ticket or something like that too. They, they actually go over all this stuff and that's part of their lesson. I thought, wow, man, that is, that is really great that they have that in there. I thought that, I thought that was great. Um, it actually goes a lot deeper into it too on, on how, to, um, how to deal with, it, uh, with, with actual responses and so forth uh, when someone cuts you off and you know, you feel like you've been disrespected and so forth. But anyway, all right. So we're at the point here on page 131, about three quarters of the way down, where it says, instead, stop, think, and decide on the best option. Again, that's our STOP acronym. Uh, acronym. Stop, think, and consider your options. Then choose the right, uh, proceed with the right choice. Practice self-control. Demonstra demonstrate the skills of positive communication. Teach yourself to remain calm at all times. Okay, well, we've got to look at something else here because teaching yourself to remain calm at all times, well, how do you do that? You've got to be prepared for it. You can turn to um, page 118 in your respect unit. Um, well, 118, positive, that's the influences, I'm sorry. It's part of positive communication and the influences. Um, that was in self-control, I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong book there. 118, in your respect unit, I'm sorry, I got off into the self-control unit again. Uh, be prepared. The question of the day, you mean I should be prepared to be shown disrespect? So let's go back to that question on 131 again, or that statement. Teach yourself to remain calm at all times. Once again, everything we've learned, it applies. You've got to be prepared, though. So being prepared. Let's go to page 118. See how it works? These things should pop into your mind when you see it in a lesson. It should pop in there, and, and even if you have to go look for it in the book, you might not know exactly where it's at. That's okay. Everybody doesn't have a photographic memory. You can go look at the index in the book and see where it's at. You know, you can look and say, you know, I think that was in the book here somewhere, and you go right to the index and find it. Very simple to do. Or if you think it might be in one of the other books, you can go to the index in that book, and you can find it. Very simple to do, okay? 
And, and these are basic lessons which we should always remember. So, uh, on page 118, you mean I should be prepared to be shown disrespect? And the reality is, is that is not everyone at this time is trying to develop a positive moral character. <laughs> That's right. You got people out there that couldn't care less about having a positive moral character. They're doing their thing each and every day, going their own way, and they, if anybody gets in their way, you better watch out. They literally regard disrespecting others as a form of entertainment. In addition, there's going to be times when someone might show you disrespect and not even realize it. You could also assume you're being shown disrespect when you're not. That's the imagined disrespect. Therefore, the answer to your question is a resounding yes. You should definitely be prepared to deal with disrespectful behavior in whatever form it might come to you. Does this mean you ought to walk around expecting pe people to disrespect you with a chip on your shoulder? No, no, no. Being prepared means to work hard at developing the positive moral character and setting your mind in advance to make positive moral choices in regards to how you respond to others. And I have a couple notes uh, on this page. Um, uh, setting your mind in advance, you know, uh, of course, page 80 in the character unit and also in the character unit, page 88, leaving yourself even room to grow. Like if you don't respond the way you really thought you should have, and after looking at the situation, you realize you could have done better. Guess what? Just leave yourself room to grow, man. Don't kick yourself too hard. One kick's enough, and then get off of it and, and move on, okay? <laughs> but, but what makes the difference here is on the next page, page 119, the preparation. Preparation. You have to be able to control your thoughts and feelings and actions. And... I think it was uh, William that had this uh, on his slideshow, if I'm correct, it was on his slideshow there uh, the last time he taught, and it showed the little uh, the fireman there uh, uh, fighting fire with fire, which doesn't work. Fighting fire with fire does not work. And, and, and let me just say in most cases, I know there's somebody that might say, well, yeah, you can go out there and burn a field and stop a fire that's raging and coming forward and stop it in its tracks, I, well, yeah, I guess you could. So yeah, that's one way of fighting fire with fire. But we're talking about adding fire or some explosive uh, item to a fire to try to get it to stop. It doesn't work, you know. You've, you've got to distinguish the fire. More disrespect will not cause that fire to go out. It never has. I've never seen an argument where two people are disrespecting themselves where one of them all of a sudden stops and says, you know what? You're right. What was I thinking? You know, it, just doesn't, it just doesn't go down that way. Now, they want to fight to the death, man. They fight and fight and fight until someone breaks it up or they walk away mad. And, and now later someone might come and apologize if they're thinking straight, at least at that time. But anyway, yeah, you have to be prepared. You have to control your thoughts and feelings and actions. You've got to be prepared you you got to be prepared for that disrespect when it comes. Not expecting it, but just being prepared for it, okay? So, teaching yourself to remain calm at all times. Learning to apply these skills when disrespect is shown will enable you to preserve the bonds of trust, care, and consideration that must exist in all close relationships. In essence, be the one to bring about the peace of solution. And in this particular lesson, even though we did cover, you know, family members and so forth before, um, and now we're looking at friends, and we are still talking about all close relationships. So what does that make you think of? Learning to apply these skills when disrespect is shown will enable you to preserve the bonds of trust, care, and consideration that must exist in all close relationships. Well, you know, you're showing respect. You're having empathy. You, I mean, I could go through so many positive character traits here. You, all these things combine to help you bring about the peaceful solution. The, the trust, the care, the consideration, the concern, the, the empathy, the, um, uh, the value system that you have. You know, you value people. Let, let's, um, in fact, uh, turn turn back to page 7 and you're respecting it real quick. Um, if 
five. Well, five, five, six, and seven actually. But uh, let's look at uh, let's look at page seven real quick. Page seven. Appreciate people; they have value too. So you know all this disrespect coming your way and everything, and and learning to control yourself when it comes your way. These are some of the things that will help you. If you learn to appreciate people, truly, honestly learn to appreciate people, you appreciate them, place a higher value on people than you do any of your belongings. People are worth more than your uh, CD player. They're worth more than your car. They're worth more than, than any of your material possessions. You should appreciate people. And when you, when you really do... These things will will help, you know. When you when you go back, uh, page five uh, in in your respect unit steps to showing respect. You know, you have you value, you appreciate. Then you can sh show true respect. Um, let's see the first paragraph there. Showing appreciation for your belongings begins by first recognize their value, and it's talking about belongings, but. Um, uh, and you know different strokes for different folks and so forth but but th this value system you know you have to value appreciate and then show the respect so that's what we want to do and that's why it mentioned appreciating people they have value too it was talking about belongings there but then uh, transferred there to people and, and that's what if we can get to where we truly love and care for other people we truly do have empathy for others, and we really don't want to hurt anybody else in any way, shape, form, or fashion, and we consider them better than ourselves and really want to see what we can do to help serve the other person in reality, not like, uh, not like the politicians in Washington serve the people, you know. Um, we, we want to do it the right way in, in honesty and truth. When we can learn to do that, then we're going to find that these problems that we have with people are going to kind of like drift off and go by the wayside, you know. Uh, we're going to really know how to deal with others. We are going to know how to help them in dealing with others. We're going to know how to help them in whatever situation they're going through. When they're disrespecting us, there's probably something going on in their life that we might be able to help them out with. If they're open to it, we can't force it on them. Remember, even if you want to do something positive for somebody, you can't force it on them. They still have the ability to make choices, and you're going to have to accept that they, they will make choices. They might choose the way that you're putting forth, and they might choose another way, whether it be bad or harmful or whether it be, uh, whether it be positive. They still have the option to choose the other way. So if we can keep that in mind and really care for others, all of this stuff will fall in place. And that is the bottom line of the peaceful solution, is when we learn how to treat others as we want to be treated, that really is the bottom line in the entire thing, okay? I'm glad everybody was able to attend tonight. Uh, I've got a little note here somewhere. Our next class will be on 628-23 at 5.30 p.m., and we look forward to seeing you again, those of you online and those of you here at headquarters. It's been a pleasure being here tonight and being able to, to help out as one of the teachers. And uh, look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.